This is Channel 25 WVTT Olean. Now, from the Twin Tiers' biggest broadcast news operation, this is the 6 o'clock report with Jeff Andrulonis and Alexa Olson. Listen on News Radio 96.7 WVTT or watch on News Channel 25 WVTT Television. WVTT proudly presents the 6 o'clock report. Good evening, I'm Alexa Olson. Jeff Andrelonis is off this week. The big story tonight on the 6 o'clock report. The Wellsville School Board had quite the drama Monday night as many members of the community came out to voice their concerns of a recent decision the school board voted on. After the recent resignation of the Wellsville Strings teacher, the board decided to cut the Strings program. According to members on the board, this cut was additionally made because only a handful of students were pre-registered in orchestra at the beginning of the school year. Many of the people angered by this decision say that they don't want to see the program go. The other side of the argument is that this will be a cost-cutting measure for the school district. If you have an opinion on this story, please join the conversation on our Facebook page, www.facebook backslash WVTT News Radio 96.7 and News Channel 25 WVTT. St. Bonaventure University has another member of its basketball family playing professionally. Jessica Jenkins, a member of last season's Sweet 16 team, signed a professional contract to play in Iceland and could be leaving as soon as tomorrow. WVTT's Derek Smith got an exclusive interview with Jenkins as she talks about her excitement of going pro. As of Monday, formal St. Bonaventure women's basketball star Jessica Jenkins will use her college experience as she enters the pros for the Keflavik Basketball Club in Iceland. I know that playing at Bonaventure for four years prepared me, um, you know, as much as I need to be prepared. So hopefully I'll be ready once I get over there. Those who are familiar with Jenkins' style will tell you they aren't surprised to see her playing pro ball. Formal head coach Jim Crowley says, we are thrilled for Jess and know that she will work very hard to find success. In 2011, Jess led the Bonnies to the Sweet 16 2012 NCAA Tournament, averaging 13.9 points per game of the season, and for her career, scored 1,441 points. Definitely, it was kind of just going to concentrate on the things that I've been doing all season. Um, you know, if it was scoring or whatever it was, so um, I think that definitely helped, but you know, it's a totally different ball game once you get to the tournament. Jenkins was a finalist for the Naismith Player of the Year Award. She downed 338 three-pointers and was ranked 11th all-time in the Atlantic 10 Conference with three points scored. It's a lot of hard work, and, you know, even if you want to take a day off or take some time off and do something different, um, you kind of got to think about that decision and make sure it's, you know, the best one and make sure you're putting as much work into it as possible. Derek Smith, here in Olean, WVTT. Well, all of us here at WVTT would like to wish Jessica the best of luck. The 39-year-old Salamanca soccer coach accused of sexual abuse has resigned this afternoon. During a special meeting Wednesday, the Salamanca School Board accepted Shane Reith Miller's resignation. Last week, the board passed a resolution to resign Reith Miller to the district office and off the soccer field. Reith Miller was accused of exchanging sexual text messages and pictures with a 15-year-old female stu student during the 2011 school year. He was placed on administrative leave, but on September 11th, the school board resigned him to a position in the district office. The school board's only comment was that Reith Miller left for personal reasons. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, known as the USDA National Organic Program, published a final rule today that extends the maximum amount of synthetic antibiotic called methanine allowed in organic poultry. Effective October 2, 2012, the final rule addresses the second of two-part recommendation by the NOSB coming together in a step-down of allowable limits of the synthetic methanine in organic feed. Well, Congressman Tom Reed has introduced a Family Farm Relief Act to the House of Representatives today, calling the success of family farms critical to the upstate economy. He introduced the bill in a bipartisan manner with Representative Chris Gibson and Representative Bill Owens. As original co-sponsors, Congressman Reed says that agriculture is the number one industry in New York, adding that our towns rely on farmers not just for food, but for the economic activity generated by the farms. 
Governor Andrew Cuomo today announced that Anchor Glass Container Corporation, a southern tier glass container maker, is receiving a 6.6 .6 megawatts in low cost electricity through the Recharge New York program that will allow the company to retain 340 jobs and invest $37.2 million in its facility. Representatives of the New York Power Authority and Anchor Glass were joined on Tuesday by local officials at the company's 100-year-old production facility in Elmira Heights in Chemung County. Meanwhile, at the University of Pittsburgh at Bradford today, there was the 30th annual Law Enforcement Awareness Day today to give people an opportunity to talk with law enforcement officers and learn more about what they do. The program included a canine demonstration and a distracted driver simulator. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court yesterday told a lower court judge to stop a tough new law requiring voters to show photo identification from taking effect in the upcoming presid presidential election if he finds voters cannot get easy access to ID cards or if he thinks voters will be disenfranchised. In a 4-2 decision, the case now goes back to a Commonwealth Court judge who initially rejected a request to stop this law from going forward. If the judge finds there is no voter disenfranchisement and that IDs are easily obtained, then the law can stand. That opinion must be handed down by October 2nd. A crash between a triaxle coal truck and a car Monday morning claimed the life of a Johnsonburg woman and left several others, including children, taken to the hospital for treatment of their injuries. It happened in Clearfield Township on the clearfield Shawville Highway. Pauline Dilley of Johnsonburg, a passenger in the car, was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the vehicle and two children, 18 months and two years old, were taken by helicopter to a Pittsburgh trauma center. The driver of the truck sustained minor injuries. Police say the fatal mishap occurred as the vehicle pulled into the path of the truck while making a turn onto the highway. And two crashes in Kane on Tuesday afternoon are still under investigation tonight. One just before five on Route 46 near Pig's Ear Road in Otto Township left a man with injuries. He was taken to Bradford Regional Medical Center for treatment. Two people were injured in another crash around 615 that occurred on Highland Road behind the Kane Area High School in Wetmore Township. One of those involved was taken to Kane Community Hospital for treatment of injuries and we hope that they are recovering quickly. Well, WVTT's Megan Sims had a lot of fun at the Wheel Around the Hub this past weekend. Check out her report. Hi all, I'm Megan Sims, the weekend specialist for WVTT, and I'm here in Smithport for the Wheel Around the Hub. So come with me, let's check it out. On a brisk and beautiful morning on September 15th, 2012, the race was set to start at noon in front of the McKean County Courthouse in Smithport. In order to find out what it takes to put together a race quite like this one, we talked to Mr. Ross Porter, the man behind it all. There's safety personnel, uh, we have uh, firemen, fire police, and regular police. We have the sheriff, that, uh, the sheriff deputy that's in the main pace car. What do you think is the significance of the race to the community? The main engine source is the same as it always has been, and that's the human. That's what's so interesting about this race. It's really got a lot of tradition to it. And in Smithport, uh, we have this early tradition. As far as the riders go, what was it like being on the course? It's a very good race. race. I would. Um... I would suggest other people to do this race because the 15 mile of course because it's a good race for beginners and it learns to give kids the motivation of competition for the hay bales so <laughs> that was pretty good sore and right over but otherwise good race I stayed at the pack dropped towards the end is Ben Fogel from Duncansville Pennsylvania I did this last year and got dropped in the last lap so it was awesome to kind of turn that around this year, but really I didn't have that many intentions of winning. For the women, Jillian Bem from Erie. This is always a challenging race. 53 miles is, is, is a long distance and it's usually very, very fast. So if you're a, a woman entering this race, then your strategy is basically to hang on to the guys as long as you can. And if you can do that, then you can usually walk away with the win. Well, that's all here from Smithport. And until next weekend, I'm Megan Sims. Have a super fantastic week. Back to you. Our thanks to Megan Sims for that report.
Well, the World News Roundup is next. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it here on News Channel 25 WVTT.